from Austin, Texas. It's The Cube. Covering DockerCon 2017. Brought to you by Docker and support from its ecosystem partners. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman and this is theCUBE's coverage of DockerCon 2017 here in Austin, Texas. Getting towards the end of our two days of coverage, uh, really been geeking out on a lot of the technology here and I, I was happy to be able to pull in uh, two guys I know, I've had them on theCUBE before, uh, to really go in as to you know, how this whole container wave is impacting their business, they go into the technology some, so you know, I want to welcome back to the program. Uh, first, you know, John White is the Vice President of Product Strategy with Expedient, who I'm happy to see not wearing his football jersey. John, thanks for joining me again. <laughs> Good and uh, you, Piscar, uh, who is the CTO of OGD. I had the pleasure of interviewing you uh, over in Europe last year to show. So, uh, you know, welcome over to Austin. Um, I, I, I think Vienna and Austin, whoa, meet coma at both of those places. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, oh, um, yeah, yeah it, it seems every time we get together, there's there, there's there's a lot of that going around. There's always so. a meet excuse, right? All right. So, so you maybe maybe start with you. Is, have you been to DockerCon before? What's your experience been here uh, at the show so far? Yeah. So this is my second DockerCon. I've been here uh, last year as well in, uh, in Seattle, um, and I'm kind of liking the vibe this time around. So last year it was really you know all about developers. I'm kind of liking it more about the enterprise right now. Um, you know, as an enterprise guy, work for an MSP, so you know we deal with a lot of enterprises, and it's good to see that Docker is, you know, giving the enterprise a lot of thought and a lot of attention because you know that that was one area where they were lacking last year. Yeah. Uh, so John, you know, you, you you look at a lot of the ecosystem. You're also yeah. a service provider. What, what what's your take so far? Yeah. So this is the first time for me at DockerCon. Um, I go to a lot of conferences, so I read the room a little bit differently, I guess, than most. Um, it's been interesting for me. Uh, these two days have been jam-packed. I've been soaking up a lot of new knowledge and uh, new vendors, new potential partners for us to look into. Uh, but I'll agree, I think uh, a lot of the focus on the enterprise, figuring out maybe how this is relevant to them in the future is actually a really great way to go and I hope to see more of that. Um, looking for those use cases right now is a little bit hard, especially when you have people like Visa that have been working on this for you know, a few years now and they're only six months into production. We're just so very, very early in this technology that I think we're, we're still walking maybe, you know, probably still crawling even through it. Yeah, before we go into the tech, let, let's talk about ecosystem. So it's a, it's a word that I heard over and over again in the keynotes. You know, John, I, I was talking with you at VMworld, at AWS reInvent. As a service provider, sometimes it feels like body blows and headshots going to some of these shows because, you know, how are they partnering with you? Uh, how do you see Docker? What kind of things do they, you know, build? How does that, you know, help or hurt your business? Yes, yeah, so Docker as a company, we really haven't worked with them quite quite yet. Um, the ecosystem though is, is interesting here. There's a lot of new faces here, a lot of faces that I've interacted with from the virtualization days, now kind of porting over to there to here. So, you know, I've already started to reach out to some of them uh, to kind of get an understanding, like for instance, Arista on the networking side, what they're doing, how they're actually um, interacting with uh, Docker, and I think that's going to be really important because I think that's going to be one of my bigger challenges in the future is how I actually network all this stuff together. Um, you know, I, I could see us definitely starting to work closer with Docker, with Docker Data Center. I think customers are going to demand something like that, and they're not going to want to host it inside of their data centers. They're going to want to host it in probably a third party service provider. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure both of you were looking at, I think it was the Visa case study when talking about utilization of what they had, and I, and I thought of you guys because it was like, oh wait, big surprise, my utilization is really low, because yeah. wait, why am I doing this in-house when I, yeah. I should be going to somebody to handle that? You, you, your thoughts on the ecosystem, you know, we talked at the new yeah. panic show, uh, you know, when you look at technology partners, you know, how, how does the Docker and their ecosystem fit into your thoughts? So it's, it, it's like uh, a whole new ecosystem to get into, right? So it's uh, kind of discovering from uh, ground zero again, what's the ecosystem looks, look like, uh, who's doing what, who's developing, what kind of new trends. Um, so it's good to be there early, just to get a, a, a good feel of the, the ecosystem, get to know the people. Um, and be able to, you know, kind of develop a, a strategy around Docker because it is early days, right? Um, so it's way too early to go, go into a customer and say, we, we have a complete package for you. Um, that's just not going to happen between now and like six months. Um, so the issue, the issue really is how do you get to, you know, a point with a customer where you can um, jointly develop a strategy to, uh, to get Docker into uh, your service profile. Um, and, and going to you know events like DockerCon really helps to uh, to kind of uh, achieve that goal. 
Yeah. So you guys are always in an interesting space. Is you you know you're consuming some of the technologies from the vendor. You've got your customers, uh, you know, putting demands on you. So uh, you know, CTO says strategy. Uh, you know, wh why not dig in for us a little bit as to you know what you're seeing, what's good, what's bad. You know, there's you know networking, there's storage, there's security. You know, maybe John, start with you. I don't know if networking be the one to start, but I'll, I'll let you choose. Yeah, I, I think you know we're going to run. I mean, we're an infrastructure company. We've been running virtual infrastructure since 2007. We know it, we understand it, and you start to understand where the pitfalls are. Um, this is going to change it. I mean, the bin packing problem is going to change significantly over the next few years. Um, some of the people that I was, went to their use case sessions, they're saying they're seeing 70% reduction in resources. Now, they're not seeing 70% reduction in resources you know, just because they made things smaller. <laughs> they just packed them tighter into a smaller uh, group of boxes. Yeah. That's going to be interesting, and you know, discovering how we can actually provide that as a true infrastructure layer for our customers is going to be a really big challenge for us, and it's going to revolve around us having pretty strong partner relationships since we don't do the professional services to kind of figure out how to transform your application. Mm -hmm. We're going to need somebody to help us there. We're going to handle the infrastructure underneath. Hey, maybe explain that a little more. I'm like, you know, if, if I'm saying, well, if I'm Amazon and uh, you know, I, I can just do that, they've got kind of infinite resources there and therefore, I, I, as a customer, I don't need to worry about that. You know, what do you have to worry about and then, you know, should your customers care or will you make yeah. that transparent to them? Let's, let's think about the, yeah. you know, when we went to virtualization, we had P2V converters, yeah. right? We all used them, we all tested them, we said, okay, this physical server now can run as a virtual server, that works. You really don't have, even though they announced something where you can take a VMDK to an image, Docker image, you really don't have a clean way to do that unless you think that building a big monolithic container is going to save you time and money, maybe, maybe it will, but there's going to be some sort of application transformation that you have to do to be really successful inside of this new platform in the future. And that's something where I think you're going to have to have partners really ingrained to help build the culture, or help build uh, the bridges to the operational teams, help to show the value to the executive team and why you're going to save money, why you're going to do something more secure, you know, how it's going to benefit you in the future. And those are just pretty big challenges that are out there in front of us. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, th so that's the major issue, right? So, you know, from our perspective, we, uh, we use ISVs for the software de we deploy for customers, you know, a lot. Um, I'd, I'd better say like 90% of the, the applications we deploy, we didn't develop or the customer didn't develop in us. It's just all you know, standard ISV stuff. Um, and, and having a network of, uh, of ISVs around you to help you, you know, transition from virtual machines into some kind of container format to you know, address the bin, pack, back, bin packing problem, you know, that's going to be, um, you know, that's going to be the, the biggest challenge to, uh, to solve, right? It's not just packing up an application and moving it into a container. It's actually you know, transforming it from you know whatever it is now into something more efficient, more scalable, uh, more resilient, um, and that's you know really the um, the issue we're trying to tackle as far as you know looking at the ecosystem, looking at how to build our own practice around it. It's not just the infrastructure anymore. It is really all about the application now. So you have to develop a whole new set of skills. You have to develop new people around you. Uh, you have to develop new services, um, and that's you know in interesting because it does have you know real real advantages for the customers, but it's going to take a while to uh, to have that mature to a level where customers actually can can put it off the shelf and uh, and implement it in their own companies. Right. And one thing I think on the infrastructure side that I just was in Visa's use case, they were talking about how they're doing it on, on bare metal. That's different for us. We've been running virtualization for so long, now to say to the engineers, hey look, we're just actually just going to run a Linux operating system, or even a Microsoft operating system now, on bare metal and we're going to run containers and get rid of that hypervisor, that's going to be a pretty unique uh, conversation to have. We've already created monitoring tools and you know, performance tools looking all at the VMs, now we might go back to just running servers again. Yeah, That'll be a new challenge. Yeah, really interesting. So, there's a lot of focus in the keynote about how they've been maturing security. Want, want to get your take on that. You know, two years ago it was like 08, you know, that's one of the biggest barriers to putting things in production. It feels at a high level like we've made some good progress. Is security still an issue? Are you comfortable with where we are? Maybe anything that, that still needs to be done? You want to go first? <laughs> sure, so. <laughs> this is a can of worms right here. This is a can of worms. Yeah, so, so security is always, you know, it's always a can of worms. Um, but you know, my take on it, it doesn't actually matter if it runs in a container or a VM. Um, like 90% of the threats come from outside the, the compute, right? So it's going to come off the network, 
of the internet, um, of your users. So, you know, really, from a security perspective, I'm kind of ambiguous which way to go. Um, but, um, again, the ecosystem story comes back into play, right? Is the ecosystem mature enough to actually deliver security products for containers? Um, you know, the VMware ecosystem is completely mature in that sense. You can just pick off, you know, 20, 20 products and basically do the same thing. And for Docker, that's going to be, you know, a, a challenge to say the least to get up to a point where you can, you know, pick whatever you actually need. Um, it's going to be a discovery and it's going to be uh, a little while before we get there. Yeah. Did, do I have to read through your tweets to find your answer, John? No, you know? no, I'll give you a full answer. I think, well, security is a mess kind of in general, but you know, I think some of the things that they're doing you know, early on, that before there's any you know, critical mass adoption yet, you know, making sure encrypted traffic and handling uh, TLS certificates in an easy fashion, that's great. I, th I was impressed with the, uh, the notary um, you know, function where it can, it can go and look at the image and know if there's any vulnerabilities and you know, go and identify the problems. It really helps the developers kind of understand the operational ask that people actually have to make sure that, okay, look, you're going to roll out this new image, this new code, let's make sure it's secure to get started at least. We all know it's going to kind of maybe fall out of uh, the norm once it actually gets up and running operational in production, but let's make sure it's secure at least to, you know, to boot the thing. Yes. Yeah. What do you see containers having, how does it have, an, when does it have a significant impact on your business? You know, does it transform the way that you deliver your service? Will it change pricing? Yeah, I, I think it's, it's going to. I mean, you're going to, you know, a few things that are going to happen. I mean, it's going to increase in scale, so you're going to have a, more to actually manage, which is going to be a new challenge. Um, that's one side of it, but you're going to probably end up consuming more infrastructure in the long run and that infrastructure is going to get commoditized even more than it already is right now, and you're going to have to make sure that that's down to you know, the minimum dollars or the minimum cents that you need to provide that you know, very small segment of actual you know, storage or RAM or compute that you need, and that's going to really shift the business, and especially when you look at a lot of containers where, yeah, you have some that maybe run you know, on a monthly basis, a lot of them are going to only be running maybe a few seconds, a few minutes. So you're going to have to have very granular tracking and understanding for that showback chargeback, to the CFO that you're actually running the services for, so they know exactly what they can expect for the bill that month. That's really different than what we're doing today. Yeah, well, will that be a challenge for you to continue to compete against the public clouds, where it seems you know, that that's a more natural fit for some of the pricing and the models that they've built? I don't think so. I think this is something where you're even getting more high, high touch with the application. You know, data sovereignty, that was listed up there, I think, on MetLife's uh, use case today. That's always going to be important. They're going to want to know where the data is living, why it's living there, how to audit, how to do you know compliance against it. That's always going to be really important. That's going to make us be you know a little bit different than the public cloud. All right. Yeah. You your yeah. business. So I, I agree, right? So the the pricing is going to be a, um, something to uh, uh, to kind of readjust. Um, but I see you know a lot of advantages in terms of security, um, secure software uh, uh, supply chain. So I'm really liking that message. Um, so instead of having you know, a big unknown in terms of whatever is coming into your data center, you now can say with a certain degree of certainty that you know, the application you are running is secure, um, it's been tested, it's been you know, tested by the compliance team. Um, and I think you know, enterprises in the end are really looking at how to mitigate those security risks and having such a, a secure software supply chain is, is absolutely going to help in, in that respect. All right. So, what, what feedback would you give to the community? What more do you want to see uh, developed areas where you think we need to make some progress? You know, you Paul, start with you. So, the, the biggest is um, monolithic applications. So, you know, a lot of enterprises still have, you know, legacy applications. You know, you've got, you've got Oracle in the Docker store now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but it's still monolith, right? Yeah. Um, so, addressing that problem one way or the other, um, but especially in terms of avail availability, recoverability, um, I think that's you know one uh, one major area where Docker needs to focus on in the coming months. All right, so so John, same question with a little twist for you is okay. uh, you know w what you'd like to see and anything that you know if you were talking to VMware, uh, what they should be doing more in this space. Okay, yeah, I think you know I want to see from Docker a lot more use cases. I want to see them start to build their user group and community a little bit more. A lot more sharing needs to occur. Um, the use case session that they had that was basically two days of use cases running were great. Um, a lot of those companies I had a hard time relating to, to my customers, I mean Visa, MetLife, they're huge. I, I really don't, I service you know, small to medium into the large, but th those, they don't have the same use cases. So 
you know, continue to focus on you know, how we can actually you know, work on this together with these new customers. Um, you know, on the VMware side of it, right, VMware is in every data center in the world. And they have a, you know, a story around Vic, they have a story around Photon. Um, you know, they need to continue to figure out how to build that bridge to you know, maybe that VMDK to uh, container tool that they have. You know, work on it together. See what you can do together to you know, take this on to the next level um, of understanding of really how we can actually transform these applications that were all built in VMs. All right, well, John, you really appreciate you guys coming through. You never hold back, sharing your opinions on it. Uh, look forward to reading. I'm sure you'll probably do write-ups from the show, too. And uh, we've actually got Visa on as our next guest here. Right. Uh, you'll probably give me a couple of questions to ask there, too, <laughs> when I go into it. Uh, but getting towards the end of theCUBE's coverage here, DockerCon 2017, thanks for watching.